Hi, you guys. Welcome to another episode of First Impression Friday, where I take a look at a whole bunch of patterns and kind of give you guys my impressions on them, my opinions on them, and also maybe some might say overanalyze them a little bit. But you know what? I, what can I say? I like taking a look, a deep dive into sewing patterns. And if you're into that too, then I think you'll love this video. I am Lindsay. I sew all my own clothes and I'm so happy you found me. I hope that you'll leave a comment in the comment section below introducing yourself so that I can give you a formal hello. All right, we are gonna jump right into this with this Mrs. Dress by Julio Cesar. This is, I, you know what, if it didn't say Julio's name here, I can't honestly say I would have known that this design belonged to him. It's very resort, very resort. They describe it as halter neck dress with narrow neck ties, plunging v-neck bodice with gathers under the bust, love that, empire waist seaming with contrast band, flared skirt, cut on the cross grain nice with high low hemline and ruffle finish with contrast hem facings and side seam pockets okay okay all right got it <laughs> i just have to make sure that i'm like absorbing all that information that i just read but we've got this really stunning i mean come on this fits her like a dream the stunning halter top, right? Look at this like modified, like sweetheart situation conforming beautifully to the curves of her body. I mean, obviously I know that some of you fuller chested women are out there going, I could never wear this. Um, I didn't know, did it say different bust cup sizes? It didn't. So I, you know, if you want to have a hot girl summer um, and make something like this even though you're fuller busted i think you totally could with some easy easy modifications i mean technically it would be a full bust adjustment but really you're just creating more room on the sides and i think that the um the gathers here will make fitting a lot easier than you might think but i think this will be stunning on any woman of any size um bust but you have this band here, which looks to mimic, it looks like ribbon to me. Um, I don't know if that is what it actually is or like if that's the intention of sewing on ribbon. We'll look at the, um, the uh, notions here in a second. But then you have this skirt here. This is what is cut on the cross grain, meaning instead of it running up and down like this, it runs like this. So... It doesn't really do much, like, it's not like bias cut where it's going to uh, change, like, the drape or shape of the garment itself. Um, but if you are using something like a striped fabric, obviously that would impact it. And then you have this, like, exposed ruffle detail. And then, obviously, the high-low is also exposed where you can see the, the ribbon hem, too. It's really, really pretty. Here's the back, which I think is also super cool. So you've got these really teeny tiny spaghetti straps. I think they're pronounced Rolo, Rolo uh, French people. I am so sorry. Rolio. <laughs> That's definitely not it. Rolu. Rolu. Am I saying it like that? I got to remember to put on my French accent with it. Um, and then this really wide elastic casing. I love a wide elastic casing. Um, this one appears to be one inch, one and a half inches maybe. And then the gathers of the skirt just fall to the floor. Deep um, hem here, which I also really like. A lot of really great details, but yeah, this is a show stopper. Show stopper. I'm thinking obviously in the fabrication that they use light and breezy, 100% for the summer. I mean, I know it kind of seems like a lot because she's got it with um, the heels, but I mean, you could wear this to Target, right? Imagine it in like a floral, something a little bit more casual. Um, I think it could be really pretty for any occasion. 
even if you start thinking toward the holidays, it could also be really pretty for that. If you live in a tropical climate where it's not too, too cold, you could definitely do like some kind of glitz and glamour with the band um, and a lot of really like fun uh, fabrics, like imagine it in like a brocade or something like that. It could be really cool. But yeah, really pretty, really pretty. Okay, we don't get a ton of photos on that, but um, there's a line drawing we just saw. Okay, here's the yardage. So they're recommending, obviously this is a summer pattern collection, so they're pretty much only gonna recommend summer fabrics. I do think that that's one of the, the downsides to having seasonal collections because if they release this same design in December and you know suggested fabrics for like holiday and stuff, they, they all still work. There's more than these fabrics that work, but new sewists wouldn't know that um, with just these options. But I guess that's why you're here, <laughs> so that I can make recommendations outside of this. But rayon blends, poplin, chalene, lightweight crepe, yeah, all of those sort of lightweight drapey fabrics for the summer for sure. Um, some interfacing, and then three quarter yards of one and a half inch wide elastic. Okay, so it's actually not a ribbon. I mean, you could use ribbon, I think. But what they have done is actually made bias tape. So it's just really wide bias tape, which is why you need almost, well, a little more than a yard and a half of fabric to make as much bias tape as you need to go around that entire hem. So maybe do some cost analysis um, against ribbon trim and see if that might be a more affordable option for you. I don't see why you couldn't use a ribbon trim. And in fact, it might even be easier to work with. I don't know. Or even like purchased bias tape. Uh, not my favorite thing to use, but they do have that like blanket binding prepackaged. That could be an option. Um, but the sizing is extra small to 2XL. Four size, the numerical sizing equates to four to 26. And what that means is nothing because we don't have any finished garment measurements width wise. So, yeah, I mean, they aren't even putting the body measurements on here anymore. So, who knows? Who knows? It does come in two separate envelopes. Extra small to medium is in one. Large to 2X is in the other one. But remember, too, like if you're a pair like me, buy based on this because this is all so voluminous that whatever pattern and uh, design ease is in there already um, is going to be plenty. Um, you really want it to fit right here at this empire waist. All right, Julio. Kicking us off with a good... What is happening? A good, um, a good start. All right, now we've got another pattern from Tom and Linda Platt, who are always known for like piecing. Like their stuff always has like interesting like shapes, and you know it's never just like one piece for the bodice. This one appears to be like a full princess seam situation. Fitted and flared dress is close fitting through the bust and has a shaped yoke. Bias armhole binding, princess seams with top stitching, invisible back zipper, hook and eye closure, stitched handkerchief hem with mitered points. Ooh, fancy. Okay, so it has, this is not like a facing. This is a, almost like a collar kind of. It is, I will say, a little bit difficult to sew this. Um... But I do love how the like neckband becomes the shoulder. I think that's a really interesting detail. And then, like it said, it has the princess seams with the top stitching. So very kind of sportswear. And then it is a midi length with this handkerchief hem that's been turned under, but has the really nice finish of the mitered corners. Here's the back. So yeah, it looks like your zipper comes up the back and then there's a little hook and eye up top here. They didn't get a super fit, super great fit on her through the back. It's a little bit too big, like pulling away from her body here. And you can just see kind of some of the 
fullness that is unnecessary. Obviously, we would be working on that on our own. Um, she's probably just a fit model, and they, you know, didn't make it custom to her. There's also this interesting little fold. Hard to say if that's construction or if it's just a little bit too big for her in the back. But cute. I think white is a great application for this. It's a little long for like, mm -mm. yeah, I think it would be really cute knee length, which is not a difficult alteration to make at all if you wanted to make it more daytime. But I mean, it's also, you know, I'm, I'm trying to picture it like with a, not with a heel, like with a sandal. When you look at the line drawings, you can definitely get that like sportswear vibe from it. I'm imagining that they are going to be recommending like mid-weight. Yeah, mid-weight crepe, linen blends, and then rayon chalet, which is a little lightweight, I think, for all the top stitching plus chalet and this collar. Oh, more power to you if you're going to take that on. Um, the more stable your fabric, the better. I mean, this is interface, but when you go to put the lining of it on, yeah, it's going to be a little bit tricky. But yeah, I like anything. Maybe even like a sateen would be really great. All right, so fusible interfacing, a zipper, and then our sizes are 6 to 14 and then 14 to 22. I love when they do an overlap. Um, if you're in between sizes, it's really easy to kind of match these two up and then grade between three sizes, even though it's two different envelopes. Um, yeah, quite a fabric hog here, four and a half yards of fashion fabric. And then the finished garment measurements on this one are 33 to 46 and a half finished. And it is a fitted bodice. So it's not going to be like no ease in the bust, but maybe like two or three inches at most. Finished waistline is here also, because again, it's fitted through the waist. Um, so again, that two to three inches. Perfect. Classic, simple. Love that. Okay, here's another really fun one. And this is going to be a good example of like a day to night, I think, which is what I've been trying to kind of maybe illustrate in the last two patterns, like how to make it fancy, but also how to maybe make it a little bit more casual. So they've got two samples on this one. Um, this is an in-house design. Maybe that's why. Fit and flare dress lined, close fitting through bust, has cut in shoulders, which are beautiful, deep V neckline, love, empire waist seaming, wonderful, with top stitching, princess seams, side seam pockets, narrow straps, center back zips, stitched hem, and link variations. And there are separate cup sizes for this one. What a cute little design, right? So we've got this really fun neckline. Um, you can see the princess seam here. I imagine it's mimicked over here. The top stitched um, empire seam and then princess seams through here. So super, super flattering on a lot of different body types, like most. I will say, though, this could just be the angle, but this looks a little like side boob territory. Um, you might need to see about filling this in or raising this up even. It does also seem a little bit low. Let's look at the back. Oh, here's the like more casual version. That fabric is stunning. Yeah, super low on the sides, right? You really only need two finger widths from like the depths of your armpit to where your underarm starts. So it should be closer to up here for sure. But this is just a really an ankle length version, a borderline maxi. Here's another good shot at the underarm, just way, way, way too low and almost like cut in too far on the front. Oh, here's where the pocket comes in. That's fun. Here's the back. Gorgeous fit, right? I mean, that fits her freaking perfectly. Um, but that's a little uh, strap that they mentioned. Uh, center back. Uh, what's it called? It's not lapped. I always get these two confused. 
um, centered. Is that what it's called? Centered zip. And just like an amazing, amazing fit. I hope they let her keep this. Um, it looks really good on her. Same here. Same here. So, um, beautiful. I think that the waist in the back is in the exact right point. You can see how her body's coming in. This is definitely the smallest part of her body. So they got the length of that right on. Yeah, that's a cute one. Cute one for sure. There are our line drawings. It, they're the same, just one's longer. Um, love it. Okay. And then the back of the envelope, jacquard sateen, Ankara fabric, and crepe. But I mean, so these are a little bit more like dressy nighttime. I'm imagining like you're on a cruise and you're going to the dinner kind of thing. But this can also 100% make be made out of like a sportswear fabric and be worn to work, to church, to like, you know, anything. I mean, you could make this and wear it literally anywhere. It would be super, super flattering. You would look like a million bucks. 22 inch simper is the only notion. Um, you do need quite a bit of interfacing. That makes me think that a lot of this bodice is interfaced. So that's really interesting. Just make sure that if you do like a lighter weight fabric, just that your lining or that your interfacing weight matches up to your fabric weight, um, which is why I love the Heat and Bond products so much because they have so many wonderful options for different fabrics. Um, I have a whole video on interfacing. I will link that. Uh, let's just put it in the description box. And um, so you guys can learn about all the different weights of interfacing that are available through them. Um, what else? You know what? Considering the fullness of that skirt, two and a half yards for the short version is not that bad. It does get up to five yards for the full length version. And it is fully lined. You actually need more lining than you do fabric. Oh, because the lining is supposedly more narrow. Um, yeah, fully lined, which I don't know that that's necessary either, especially if you were going to make more of a casual version. You know, Vogue is always going to be kind of like our elevated, more fancy, more, you know, polished brand of all of them. So I get why they're doing fully lined, but you could definitely cut some corners and, and only line that bodice. Finished gar garment measurements um, for the different bust cups. I'm just going to do the full range. We have a range of 33 inches up to 52 and a half, depending on how full your bust is within all of this. And they didn't give us a waist measurement, but hopefully it's on the pattern pieces themselves. But you should, yeah, you should definitely be buying this based on your bust anyways. I love this. Very pretty. Okay, then we have this cute little number. Oh, by Claire Schaefer. I gotta say, I don't know that we've seen a Claire Schaefer number in quite a while. So fun to see that she's back. A lot of really interesting style lines on this one also. Bias cut, which if you this is your first time tuning in, I'll say it quickly, but bias cut dresses flatter every single body type. That's all I'm going to say about that. They're just perfection. Close fitting through bust, lining sewn by hand, okay, <laughs> has front darts, deep V back neckline with band detail, back zipper sewn by hand with hook and eye closure, lingerie guards, so like uh, bra carriers, Blind him with interfacing and him weights. I mean, you want a couture sewing experience? This is your pattern. If you want something that you can just like hyper focus on the details, Claire has got your back. So I have thoughts on the fit. So this neckline, super beautiful. The way that it's cut in on the shoulder, excellent. The dip of the... Um, arm side pretty much spot on maybe it could be a touch higher but this seems a little bit high to me 
or long. Maybe that's it. Maybe more long than high. Like it should stop out here somewhere. Right? Are y'all, is that the, <laughs> are y'all seeing it the same way as me? Um, but if you were to get those right, look how cool this is. I mean, certainly not the easiest thing to sew, anything that comes to a point like this, but super, super cool, right? I mean, talk about ladies who lunch. Ooh. Wow, so this is like a little bit of a vintage nod, right? To have this almost kind of like a lapel situation happening. I think they called it a band in the description, but um, the center back zip stops mid back. I, uh, I do think that if you wore a bra, it would show. So that's something to keep in mind. Fancy, yeah, custom couture collection. Yeah, even on the line drawing, it looks really high. Could that possibly be the intent? I don't know. Okay, I'm sure we're going to get some fancy fabric suggestions. Yep, Mikado, which is like a silk. Wool crepe, silk dupioni. And you know what? Like, yes, you could absolutely make this out of like a sateen or something more casual, but like, are you really going to go through the trouble of hand sewing a lining for like a dress that you just throw on for every day? No, this is like a special thing. I'm imagining it in white for some version of a wedding thing um, or even as a wedding guest, uh, bridesmaids. Like this is a fancy, fancy dress. Um, the lining, they're recommending charmeuse and china silk. So, I mean, she's not like mincing words here. Like this is a couture dress and that's what it's supposed to be end of story. Um, the interfacing silk organza, <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. So we've got an 11 inch zipper cause it only goes like halfway up your back hook and eye and then hem weights. Um, just two yards. So if you are going to make this and you want to go all in on silk, you know, it's not going to be, I mean, you're not going to go bankrupt over it. Um, the lining a little less than two yards. And you're interfacing a little over a yard, which makes me think that this entire bodice is interfaced. Finished bust measurements, 33 and a half to 47. Waistline is 27 and a half to 41. So not the most inclusive thing we've ever seen. Um, there will be some ease, some uh, design ease in the hip, but really not that much. I mean, it's pretty close fitting throughout. Very slight like a line happening here. Okay. Next, we have this cutie. This seems to be an in-house design. Okay. The in-house designs are going to give us a lot more options and intended more so for the masses than some of these designer based ones when they when they do the designer patterns, they really have to stick with the designer's intention. And if that designer is not inclusive or very, very fancy, that's just what you're going to get with them. But the in-house can borderline, you know, can, can kind of, you know, explore that gray area a little bit. Crisscross halter dress, fully lined, has front and back bodice pleats, waistband, flared skirt, side seam pockets, invisible back zipper, hook and eye closure, stitch gems, and length variations. Pretty bodice. Something very different, right? I think some of the criticisms we gave Big Four through the pandemic was that things got way too simple. It was like, we can get this from an indie designer. Like, we, we come to Big Four because you guys have, like, the pattern drafting expertise, the design expertise. Like, you're supposed to, like, follow the trends and stay, like, ahead of things where I feel like during the pandemic, it was just like, let's just put some elastic waist pants up and call it a day. <laughs> um, but look how beautiful this is. I mean, really, really pretty. So this halter that wraps around your neck, all these beautiful pleats and folds. You've got an actual waistband. I can't tell you the last time we saw that center front seam on the skirt. And then also a side seam pocket. And it is just below the knee length. 
Here it is in black with a belt that is purchased. I had hoped that that was part of the pattern, but it is not. But I mean, look at it in black sateen. Stunning. Cute. I love that they made two versions. You've got your little bit more of like a, I don't know, tea party, brunch, you know, some version of a wedding guest. Um, and then you have the black version, which is, uh, you know, a little bit more date night, evening. All right. So there are some issues with the bodice length here. As you can tell, this is pulling away from her. There's just really no... I mean, for no pun intended, but wiggle room here because the bodice is, it goes into this neckband. So whatever the length between your neck and your waist is, like if there's too much fabric there, like your body's just going to push that fabric away, especially with a zipper that's like kind of stiff. Um, so checking that waist measurement is going to be imperative. It didn't look bad on the front, um, but this is way too long for her. By about, I mean, an inch, maybe more than that. You could pinch out of maybe two inches, actually. But if we're imagining this nice and flat against her body, um, it's, you know, would be really beautiful. Again, with the pleating detail kind of coming down, this hitting at her waist, which is really more up here. Um, would be really nice. The skirt looks great. Hers looks exceptional. She's just obviously, I mean, you can tell, like she's got a long torso. She's much taller than the other model. Um, so you can see kind of the difference between a well-fitting bodice and not. Um, super pretty. Yeah, I mean, look at them side by side. Like, average torso length. <laughs> She's, like, very tall, which, good for her. Yeah, okay. Um, line drawings, yep. There we have it. Yeah, I really love all the details on this one. I really do. Okay, now, envelope. Crate, sateen, rayon chalet, broadcloth. Yeah, a lot of really good options through here. Um, because it's really a bunch of pleats and no, I don't think I saw any darts at all. It's all made up of pleats. You could really get away with drapier fabrics that, I mean, I don't know that I would go so far as like all silky types of fabric. A little bit more weight, I think, will help you just in terms of execution, especially, like, with this waistband. Um, and just, like, pressing these to get them so perfect, I think, would be better in something a little bit more weightier. Um, even if you did, like, a rayon voile or, I mean, rayon is still good because that is going to give you the drape, but something a little bit heavier weight, you know what I mean, would be nice. Not heavy weight, but in this category of light to medium weight fabrics. Okay, so you have lining, you also have interfacing, you have a zipper, two hooks and eye for the, like, the back neck like collar thing. Two size ranges, six to 14 and then 14 to 22. So clearly they have not, you remember uh, Mimi G made that post earlier this year about extending the size ranges that is clearly not gotten over to the Vogue side yet, fully embraced uh, in Simplicity and in McCall's for sure. Butterick, I can't say for sure. I can't remember uh, what their spring sizing looked like. But for, for Vogue, we're still just stuck at the 22 inch as the, size 22 as the, as the largest. Um, and no finished garment measurements on this one either. So um, just a little less than a yard of interfacing, probably for the waistband and the neckband, I think. Or maybe even that whole bodice. I don't know if you could do the whole bodice in three-quarters of a yard. Maybe. But definitely the waistband for sure. And maybe some portion of that neckband. Or the neck D 
detail. Um, three and throw out three yards of fabric for a, the whole thing is lined, which again, you don't have to line the skirt, especially if you're doing the heavier weight, opaque, non sheer fabrics. Um, and then dress B, which is the longer one, the black one, four and a half yards. Cute. All right. Now we have, look at this stunner. A, another in-house design, lined dress, so again, fully lined, close fitting through bust and waist, has wide square neckline, flared skirt with diagonal gathers under the waistline. Diagonal gathers, maybe we'll be able to see what that means. Side seam pockets, low cut back with invisible zipper, stitched hem with horsehair braid, and contrast variations, separate pattern pieces for your bodices. Okay, a lot going on here. So, square neckline, sort of a wide-ish strap. Princess seam. Into, I don't know what diagonal gathers mean. Oh, wait, it's this. We'll be able to see it better on the line drawing. So it's gathered into the waist seam and then something else is gathered here that creates the pocket. That's kind of cute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can totally see it here to give more fullness to the sides. Um, and then this is the horsehair braid. Well, underneath, you have to just kind of imagine it. But that's what gives it this like ribbony kind of vibe. This is totally like right off the last year's spring runway. Um, it might be a little long waisted and there's a lot of ease in the bodice for both women. Um, it's not like, it's not as fitted as I would probably like. It's just sitting away from the body like a little bit more. They did try to make this version a little bit more casual, but I think you could probably even go, mm, I don't know. I'm trying to think like chambray, but Maybe not. Maybe you just need to embrace it as like a fun party girl dress. There's the low back. It's really, really cute. I mean, it's not going to fit in for everybody's lifestyle, but it is really cute. You can see how big the bodice is here, right? Maybe it is just too big. <laughs> After all that, maybe it is just too big. But it looks great through the waist. Yeah, I want to have somewhere to wear this, but I don't think I do. But maybe get it now and make it in red for the holidays or for your next, you know, whatever big event you might have to go to. We will get back there, guys. Like, we will eventually have parties again. <laughs> okay, so yeah, you can really see the diagonal gathers that they're speaking of here. So cute. I wonder if... I wonder how cute it would be to make this with a, just like not with the bodice, but with like with a waistband of some kind and then like casual, cash it up with like a, you know, rib bodysuit or something. I, yeah, I just want to make this skirt, I think. <laughs> so they're recommending Mikado, Poplin, lightweight twill, sateen. So I mean, lightweight twill is a little sports wary. Poplin is kind of cash. Lining fabric, interfacing, 12 inch zipper, five and a half yards of two inch wide horsehair braid, horsehair trim. Now you don't have to use the horsehair. If you don't, your skirt will just fall closer to your body, especially if you use like a lighter weight fabric. Um, the horsehair is really just gives the volume to the, the hem, but you can definitely leave it off if you feel like that makes it too fancy. But it really does help with all these gathers to give them something to kind of like sit in. You know what I mean? Like all of this gap, all this fabric that's gathered into this thing kind of expands out into here. And if you don't have the horsehair braid, it might just fall flat. You know what I mean? Well, literally it will fall flat. But I also mean like in terms of like impressiveness and like um, just the appearance of it all will just seem a little bit meh so 
So try it. You can always take it out if you don't like it, right? Um, 6 to 14, 14 to 22. Again, on the sizing, you need a lot of interfacing. I'm guessing. Yeah, they're really into the interfacing these days. I can't imagine that whole bodice. Maybe the straps for sure. I don't know what else would be. Um, fully lined, like it said. Uh, then your dress is about three yards for the short version and a little bit more for the longer one. And then your bust cup sizes are 34 to 50 and a half. But I mean, if they are making their standard size for fit models, like I assume, I don't know how this works for real. Maybe somebody can tell me, but I assume that they say, okay, we're making a size four and on all their garments, they make a size four. And then for their fit models, when they do like a casting, they say we're looking for models that fit X, Y, Z uh, measurements. And then when we see it here and it looks too big on them, that's because the size four was actually graded too big. Is that, that's how I imagine it happens. So if that's the case, then even your 34, even your 34 here, like let's say this was your size, might be too big for you too. So it's important. That's why I like the fast fit worksheet because it really does analyze the size against not just pattern ease, not just wearing ease, but also the design ease as well. So, all right. Next. Oh, vintage. Okay. My vintage girlies just sat up in their seats a little bit because Jackie O showed up to the inauguration. She's here. <laughs> Evening or mid knee length, full strapless dress. I don't know what a partial strapless dress is. Is gathered into full underdress with foundation. Maybe these are like vintage terms that I just don't understand. If a full strapless is something than a non-full strapless. Let me know also what is full underdress with foundation. What does that even mean? Self bias tube bow or ribbon bow is under bust line. Okay, got it. Two and a quarter inch hem allowed on dress. Narrow hem for sheer fabrics. Okay. This is why I used to not even review vintage patterns because I just don't understand the construction of them at all but from what I can tell we've got this like almost like a cummerbund effect turned sideways turned up and down instead of the little thingies going this way they're going this way um into this little ribbon thing which you can either make with cell fabric or use a ribbon and it gets attached into this little side seam and then all of this is like extra. Here it is in a sheer with a sheer overlay. You can see that ribbon stopping there. I'm imagining this is like a velvet and then you've got like sateen underneath and then this sheer on top. But so all of this is like super, super full. Whereas in the front, all of that fullness is kind of pulled into this little bow. It is a really, really, really sweet design. 1966. Yeah, I mean, it's really, really something. It doesn't look like much in the line drawings, but those little illustrations are adorable. Okay, dress and underdress. Oh, underdress, full underdress. Okay, so the underdress is the, is the, is the, this part, the dark part underneath here that's like close fitting. So am I to assume that under this is a close fitting dress as well? Wow. So you're basically making two freaking dresses. So you have your brocade, crepe, satin, and silk for the underdress. And then for this outer layer, sheer fabric such as chiffon and voile. And then the foundation dress. Foundation is, oh gosh. Look, and then underlining. How many layers are on this dress? Oh my goodness. Yeah, I, I could not make heads or tails of this without looking at like, I guess the instructions and then there's a hem interfacing where you use cotton flannel. Wow. 
four very small covered snaps, hooks and eye, feather, boning, grosgrain, ribbon, ribbon, elastic, twill tape, zigzag wire stays. What is that? <laughs> I am overwhelmed. My head is spinning. Okay, but they did make the sizing one size larger, 6 to 14, and then 16 to 24. When they add this larger size, you lose the overlaid uh, size. I do not, for the life of me, understand why we can't maintain, like, why is there a limit to five sizes per pattern? I don't get it. Like, indie posts are, like, putting, like, 30 sizes in one. I don't understand. Um, so, five yards of fabric for the long version, then your underdress, then your additional underdress. Yeah, you guys can just take a look at all that that you will need. And then your bust line measurements for the foundation <laughs> are 33 to 48 and a half. Your hip line for the underdress, which I don't even know why that is that separate than the foundation. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, there you go. Those are your sizes. We have another little vintage pattern to look at, but this one's more like just a caftan. So I'm imagining it's a little sim simpler. Please tell me there aren't like 45 dresses underneath this one dress. Very loose fitting pullover, evening length caftan. Look how long this description is for a caftan. Has front, oval, and back scooped neckline, side front, side back seams, no side seams. Okay. Side panels with square armhole. Okay. Slightly above elbow length, shaped cape sleeves, extending to hemline. Wow. Okay. And narrow hem. Yes. Front buttonhole openings at waistline are for purchased cording, holding, and front fullness. Okay. Top stitching. Shading will occur with nap fabrics. Okay. I think that that last the little bit about the nap fabrics means that not everything is cut on the straight grain. Maybe. And that, or maybe because some of it is cut on the bias, you will, it'll just look like your fabric is different colors even when it's not. It's not a bad thing necessarily. Okay, so... High neckline, here are your si not, not side seams. What do they call them? Like side front seams that goes into this sleeve that does have a uh, seam on the top. And then all of that kind of just comes down cascade, 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 all with this narrow hem that you can see um, at certain portions. And then you have this little belt that comes through little buttonholes. And I imagine it's stitched into this only through the front. So on the back, you're not going to have one at all. Yeah. Low scoop back. Why does she look like she's on stilts? Like nobody is this. Like where is her butt? Here? No butt. No. <laughs> she looks like... I get that you can be long-waisted. I get that you can have long legs. She has both. But I guess that was like the style of the um, the fashion illustrations back then. 1979 design. Very share. Share vibes. Super simple to sew. Okay. And then yardage. Crepe de chine, crepe, batiste, chalet. Yeah, you really want those lightweight drapey fabrics. Two yards of cording. All of your sizes are in one, extra small to 2X, which equates to a 4 to a 26. That's about as inclusive as Vogue is ever going to get. Um, and then, of course, your finished measurements are very full because this is just a very oversized dress. Five and a half yards of fabric. Good grief. Okay, now we have... This little guy, okay, just taking it in, <laughs> give me a second, <laughs> loose fitting pullover top, has low V neckline, yeah, I mean that neckline goes to here, almost to her belly button, ruched bodice, bias neck, armhole facings, 
dropped shoulder, front ties, elastic waist, length variation. Dropped shoulder, yes. Dropped waist? Was that, is that the intent? So you've got this deep V bias bound, drop shoulder, which it said armhole facings, but they must be like baby facings, pretty much like bias tape. Then you've got all these gathers into more bias appearing something. Like that's not just a seam. There's like an actual like something there. Same here with this scoopy one. And then there's an elastic, there's elastic in here. I don't see why it's not holding anything in just to give it structure, but then why not execute it the same way that this was executed? What is the point of the elastic? I do like this. I do like this. I do like this. The dress. Oh gosh, I don't know, from far away. I think it's this that's throwing me off. Let's see the line drawings. I mean, the line drawings make it look like that's supposed to be your waistline. And this is supposed to be your underbust, and this is your overbust. And so, uh, yeah, this is just way too long. Like this whole thing needs to be way up here. And then this all needs to be like in here somewhere. And I think that's what's throwing me off about it is it's just way too long for both of them. This fits her a little bit better up here. But even still, this needs to be like an inch or two higher. So I, I can't, I'm having a hard time even visualizing. Well, no, I can visualize that, but I can't tell if that is the difference enough so that I would want to make it and it would be cute. I think it's different enough, unique enough of a design. Not like something we see anywhere else. It looks very ready to wear that I'd be willing to try it. I know this style would be very flattering on me, you know, because you, it'll give that appearance of an hourglass and us pairs are usually like straighter down and then out. So when you have something that makes you look wider, that's a bad way to say it. At the top, it gives that hourglass illusion. Plus you have all this like pulling in and gathering and ruching. That's just super flattering anyways. Um, like it's going to float away from the body pretty much everywhere except for where these little thingamajigs are. I think I like it. I think when you raise the hem, it's going to look a lot more, just a lot better. This, this, the proportions on this are all wrong. So keep that in mind if you are going to be grabbing this guy. Because that is the waistline, right? That's not a dropped waist. I think it would have said dropped waist somewhere in here, don't you? Yeah, it could be really cute. I love the idea that you can make this out of like Swiss dot, gauze, lightweight cotton, like the inexpensive fabrics. So it wouldn't be a huge investment. Um, they recommend poplin, gauze, chali, broadcloth, any of those like cotton types, um, any kind of lightweight linen blend. Uh, rayon linen any of that would be great and then you need elastic 3 8 inch elastic that's it for notions it's a pullover top a pullover top and dress 6 to 14 14 to 22 a little less than two and a half yards for the top a little less than three and a quarter yards for the dress and that's just because so much of this is being cinched in to create all of this ruching no garment measurements Okay, now we've got, oh Lord, Mrs. Top, Shorts, and Skirt. 
why they chose this as the cover photo and not this is beyond <laughs> me. I don't get it. I don't get it. Um, anyways, we're not going to dive too deep into that, but this is the description. Close fitting lined bra top. So I think what's been missing from sort of the crop tops that Simplicity released, the, um, you know, all the like, uh, shoot, what, corset tops that McCall's did is the sort of finish of them all are not super polished. This is, this looks like a corseted crop top that is going to have the structure that you need to wear it on its own. Um, it has cup seaming, contrast edge stitching and top stitching, separating zipper on the back. High rise semi fitted shorts have front pockets with reverse construction bands. Reverse construction bands. I'm assuming that has something to do with how these are constructed. Button trim, back dart, stitched hems, top stitching. Skirt has pleats and high low hem, wrong side shows. Shorts and skirt have side hook and eye and invisible zipper closing. I love a side zip on bottoms. Heavy duty top stitch thread recommended. Complete the look with these gold buttons. Okay. Um, I love that they're like, you know, trying to cross promote. <laughs> it's really funny. Um, okay. So here is the bra top. Like I said, beautifully constructed. The style lines, all of it is perfect. It does not come with multiple cup sizes though. Like I don't understand that either. Like clearly of all the times when we need multiple cup sizes, it's this. So sorry, big chest girlies and, and little chest girlies, like, or all of you that don't just fit into like the average and the norm. I'm sorry. Cause this is really cute. All right. And then the shorts, um, a little long in the rise that I can forgive. Um, also something's happening here. I think it'll be more evident when we see the back, if they show us the back, um, the dark contrast. Oh, I can see the reverse construction. This is like almost like a patch pocket would be sort of, you know, this is like, um, if you were to run your hand over this, it would not be smooth. It's like turned under here. I hope I'm explaining that well. Um, anyways, the, the, the top stitching is fine here. I don't know why I don't like it as much on the shorts. I can't tell if it's because the weight of the fabric on the shorts, maybe. But, I mean, here is, I mean, just everyone's dream summer vacation outfit, right? I mean, yeah, I don't know if it's suitable for Target, but I still want one. Um, and you can see the wrong side of the fabric, like they said. So they picked one where the front and the back look very similar. Thank you. It's probably just some kind of cotton situation. Yeah, the shorts look better on this pose. Hands in pockets. Actually, the back looks okay. I was expecting a nightmare in the back. There's just a lot of fullness through the inseam, which is causing um, this little fold and the one that was in the front. But honestly, this curve looks okay. Still a little bit on the long side, uh, rise-wise. Rise-wise. <laughs> Um, and then this man, so, you know, I just made that top for the sew along that has the separating zipper that top comes down to here and I do not have any trouble zipping it at all. Um, this being higher, I mean, I guess it's like clasping a bathing suit, you know, where you have that, like almost like a really long hook that goes into the little casing thing. I guess if you're but ambidex if your bidex if your dexterity is good enough to do that, then you could probably do this. But good on them for getting this little stitching line absolutely perfect. Straight across. Love that for them. Uh, but it is a centered zipper, so that you know does help it. It's a little bit easier. I love the top. Here's the back of the skirt. Again, because you have that side zip, it just creates such a beautiful 
just everything about the way this lays is really pretty. And I love that they're using like a metal, like fashion-y zipper. That's cute. Yeah, the shorts are take it or leave it. The skirt has even, like, I've got those. You know, this I would be buying this solely for this bra top. Yeah, it's a nice, it's a good design here. All right, yardage, can't be much, right? Twill, linen, Ankara, sateen. Oh, maybe that's what she's wearing in the skirt. Is Ankara the same, right to wrong? It might be. Yeah, it definitely is. Lining fabric, lightweight fusible interfacing, heavy duty top stitch thread, separating zipper, buttons for the shorts, and then invisible zipper, hook and eye for the skirt. I'll say about the heavy duty top stitch thread, I do think that that adds an element of structure to something like the uh, bra top, but it does not do anything structurally for the shorts. So maybe that's why I'm feeling like it's a little bit weird on the shorts. But 6 to 14, 14 to 22, the top is a almost a half yard wonder, which don't exist. <laughs> and then fully lined, um, interfacing no, that can't be right. Oh, because it's 20 inches wide. Yeah. Uh, and then your shorts, one and a half-ish. Skirt, one and a half. So yeah, about two yards all in all. Not bad. And that's if you made them matchy-matchy. Okay. I'm feeling this. Oh, it's just the skirt. I was like, I like that knit top. Okay. Flared skirts have contoured waistband which I have thoughts on already, with button closure, fly zipper, side front pockets, and front and back unpressed pleats, narrow hem, and length variations. So this is a pleated skirt with belt carriers, wide waistband. Now, contoured waistbands, now that I'm looking at it, I do believe, does that say juicy, like as in juicy couture? <laughs> Um, <laughs> where was I? Waistband. Yes. Cur contoured waistband. So contoured waistbands mean that the waistband is not just a straight strip of fabric that is sewn or, you know, onto the skirt. It actually has like a U shape to it. Not as dramatic as a U, maybe more like a C. Um, and normally when skirts sit high up on the waist, like this one does, you don't need that because your body isn't super curvy there. But because this one is longer, you can actually see how it needs a little bit of contouring to get around, you know, this, what is beginning, the beginnings of her kind of hip curve. Here is just a shorter one. Oh, it actually has a fly closure. Did it say that? I must have just like powered through and wasn't paying attention. Unpressed pleats, pockets. Yeah, very, very sportswear. Like, I don't know that they really executed this pattern to the best of what it can be. Maybe the styling is what is off. Because it's, I mean, when we get to the line drawings, you're going to see, like, it's not... A revolutionary design but I don't know something about it isn't like grabbing me maybe I would have liked it better yeah I think this ah, the styling is all I can think it's cute enough right yeah I don't know something about it's just like yeah not grabbing me is really the only way I know how to explain it um, linen royal twill. I've never seen that before. Broadcloth chalet. Yeah, maybe that's what it is. It's the fabric choice being too lightweight. I, like, where is I don't know what royal twill is. Is that the same as twill twill? Um, like, yeah, more like the sportswear type of stuff is maybe how I'd see it. 
But like I said, cute enough though, you know, like if you need a pleated skirt, that's kind of like an everyday pleated skirt. Um, lining fabric and fusible interfacing, seven inch zipper and one button, six to 14 and then 16 to 24. So we do have that larger size here. Um, just like five eighths of a yard of interfacing, two and a half yards for the short skirt, almost four for the long skirt, and then half a yard of lining because it's just probably for the waistband. Um, so waistline measurement, 25 inches up to 41. And again, that is about as inclusive as you're going to get from Vogue. The only one they're missing here is the size four. And really the only thing that you have to fit here is the waistband. I would have, have I would have half a mind to just muslin the waistband. And if you get that to fit and then you fit your pleats into the waistband, the rest of it, the fit is going to be fine. Okay, this is some kind of cover up. Mrs. Jacket and Pants by Sandra Bitsina. Okay, so Sandra is known for her, like, she has her own way of fitting. I think it's by, like, letters. Um, and always very, like, interesting structurally. Like, you can see these lantern sleeves and, you know, this interesting cuff here. Um, so always really unique, fun designs from her. Loose fitting, unlined topper with asymmetrical hem. Raglan sleeves with wide cuffs, side panel, and hood. View A has separating front zipper, side seam pockets, purchase bias, armhole facings. Hmm. Uh, flat belt seams and contrast hood lining and cuffs. Whew. View B has front button and thread loop closure. For contrast sleeves, French seams, and purchase biased hem binding. Pull on pants have draped inside leg. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. I have to go back. What did that say? <laughs> Contrast sleeves, French seams, and purchase bias hem binding. Okay, now I need to see the differences. Okay, so this is A, right? These little teardrop pockets that are top stitched down, asymmetrical hem, zipper front, but it's open from here down. Raglan sleeves, contrast cuff, contrast hood lining. I think that was everything. And then this other one, same pattern pieces. I see. This has a thread and button closure, so not a zipper. And then because I guess it's intended for shears, you finish this seam with bias binding. I guess. I think that that is super freaking cool. I get that they're using it as like a cover up because I'm thinking she has a bathing suit underneath depending showing this skin here through the eyelet. But imagine if this eyelet was a solid fabric and maybe you'd want to make it a little bit longer through the front. I think that'd be a really cute dress. There it is. Opened in the front. Really big hood. Interesting pick for summer. I guess that's why they made it out of the sheer fabrics to show you like, but am I wearing a hooded garment to the beach or pool? Maybe. And then they barely showed the pants, but... Maybe the pants are knit. If that's the case, I'm buying this pattern for the pants alone. Because tell me that wouldn't be like the most comfortable thing you've ever worn. Here are the line drawings for the jackets. Yardage is for the two jackets. Linen, eyelet, silk crepe. Also stretch mesh if you want to do the contrast sleeve. I think you could do a lot of different fabrics through here. I wouldn't just relegate it to these three for sure. Even like uh, like a waterproof type fabric or like a 
like a windbreaker type of fabric. Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of different fabrics would be suitable for that. And then, yes, the pants are knit. Incredible. Want those on my body right now. 50% um, stretch on the cross grain. So one-way stretch, 50%, uh, which is pretty significant. Um, I'd go the cotton spandex route if it were me. But interfacing for the jacket is organza. And then one 24 inch separating zipper, a big button, bias tape. And then this, all the sizes come in one, A through J. I'm not entirely sure what A through J means, but it's, well, the jacket's very loose fitting, but 37 and a half up to 60 and a half. And then your fabric requirements through here. No waist measurement on those pants. Okay. Or hip. Okay. Next up, we're going into some swimwear, menswear, both of which I don't, I'm nervous to speak on. So how about we just like look at them? I just don't understand the construction of either. So that's why I don't like to do, I don't like to review something that I don't fully understand. Hope you can understand that. But this says lined swimsuits have contrast, narrow binding, ruching, front cutouts, leg openings finished with elastic. View A is halter style and ties in back. View B has narrow straps. I mean, it is cute. Okay. <laughs> Oh, that one's fun too. Uh huh. I like this. Is this if this is ruching? I like that a lot. But the back is really pretty. Comes down to that pretty V. Okay. Yeah, looks great on these girls. Yeah, and it is ruching. I do like that a little ruching through here too. Perfect. Looks good to me. <laughs> I'm sure if you've ever done lingerie or something, you're looking at this and going, oh my God, this thing isn't fitting right. But to the naked eye, it looks good. I think that this one would also be an equally cute like bodysuit if you made it out of like rib knit or something. I don't know. Maybe not. Um, swimwear fabrics with four-way stretch, 75% stretch to be exact. Uh, swimwear lining, uh, swimwear elastic. Didn't even know they made that. Three yards for a blah, blah, blah. Okay. And then eight to 16 and 18 to 26. Excuse me. Literally, I don't think I've ever seen this size combination from Vogue ever. An 8 to 16. I mean, that obviously eliminates the petite girls. So they're all sitting here going, wait, what? But it adds in a whole bunch more full-size women. So where's the model? Oh, so frustrating. Okay. That's your fabric requirements. Really not a lot, I guess. Maybe that's a lot for a swimsuit. I don't know. And then we're not going to get any finished measurements to tell us what a size 26 even means. All right. Well, then we have these guys, swimsuits and tank tops. Honestly, I have no idea what's going on here, but I love a man in short shorts. And if you're watching this at work, you might want to just go ahead and call it now because I see Speedos which I just, out of curiosity, need to know what and why. I, I The short looks great. I, it, if Dan were wearing that, I'd be like, yes, babe, you look wonderful. I, uh, this, okay, okay. It's a lot. <laughs> but he seems pleased. He seems very happy. So there's that. All right, guys. Literally, gentlemen. 
here you go. This is your hot girl summer. Are guys wearing Speedos? Really? Maybe in Italy, you know, but like here? Like if I go out to Myrtle Beach, I'm going to see somebody in a Speedo? Okay. I just want to leave you with that. Next, we have this little men's outfit, super cute, shortened pants, and then his little linen pants and shirt, also super cute. I love the representation here, right? I love that there are three men's patterns. That might be a record. I think we're usually seeing like one, maybe two, and maybe one of those is unisex, so it sort of is like cheating. Um, so I'm happy to see these for all of our, you know, mainly men's wares out there. If you don't know him, he has a great account. Um, so I love that for them. I, I do. And they look great. I mean, the fit on this, I mean, if Dan showed up like this to anything, I would be like, yes, looks great. If he showed up like this, I'd be like, uh-huh. You know, I wouldn't be upset with that at all. So, yay. All right. With all that, though, that is our Vogue Summer. And honestly, you guys, we, we I think we're in redemption period here. Um, there's a lot. There is a lot. I feel like everybody's kind of like back, got their heads in the game again. You know what I'm saying? Um, for Vogue, you know what I'm saying? Because they're always going to be a little bit high design. Um, a little bit, I love that that said full screen and then it just didn't. Um, they're always going to be high design, right? They're always going to be like the closest to like couture finishes that we can possibly get. Um, but even with that, we have some designs that can be read as day, night, fancy event, casual event. Um, so I like that for Vogue because I like Vogue construction, but I don't always have a fancy event to go to. So I like whenever they can combine good construction with something I'd wear to Target. Overall, I mean, of course, there are some exceptions, as with anything. Everything seems to be fitting really well, designed really well. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of really great qualities about this collection, for sure. Um, as with any sewing pattern, though, you know, you have to make adjustments unique to you. And then my only last thought is I hope by the end of this year we can see some larger size ranges from Vogue. I mean, I get that it's slow to make big changes in a company like that, um, but hopefully we can get there by get everybody on board. Everybody at whatever, the, I don't even know the name of the company anymore, like whoever owns all these patterns, companies, the big four, five, six that we have now, um, I hope we can get everybody on board with the plus sizing and petite sizing, you know, like the range should be the four to 28 or whatever it is for all of them. Even if that means there's three envelopes, even if that means God forbid you put more than five sizes on one pattern. Anyways, <laughs> I want to know what you guys think of the collection. Leave a comment in the comment section below. Yeah, I guess I got to start saving my coin because, yeah, there's definitely someone that I want to get. But I want to know which ones you love, which ones you're going to be buying, which ones you loathe. Um, any, just any thoughts you have about the collection at all, leave them in the comment section below. But that's going to do it for me, y'all. I will see you all very soon. Bye.